in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to the rebirth of Thunderdome. Thunderdome! Well, well, you've been asking for it on Twitter, on all the social medias, uh, and the Patreon just exploded, and we were able to put it as one of the things, one of the gifts or one of the tiers, and damn if we're not back with Thunderdome, man. It, yes, back by popular demand. Mm. This is what we got asked about outside of the show, whether or not it yeah. was ever going to come back, was Thunderdome. Yeah, and this I was mean, your idea. Yeah, well, it, it seemed like a good interactive uh, thing to do with the fans. Hey, mm-hmm. we can incorporate them. Uh, it also takes some of the burden off of us of having to come up with, okay, what, what do we want to choose as two movies? What kind of topic are we looking for? Right, right, right. It's never really that difficult, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you have infinite options. Yeah. Sometimes makes it impossible to make a choice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the triumphant return of Thunderdome. <laughs> Hopefully, my squeaking chair doesn't <laughs> screw up. I like armrests. You do. That's you the do problem. like armrests. That's all right. Well, I'm John Roca. Uh, I am uh, Matt Nost. This is the top ten show, and like we said, this is Thunderdome. Matt, do you know who the people were who were who were like the who, three numbers you choose, three names the you choose? Th- three. Uh, do you the remember? two. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I'm no, just no, no. The two you. winners were Rachel and Joey. I'd have to look up their specific names. I okay, Rachel that. and Joey. That's enough for them. And then from, uh, the fr- from Friends. And then the person that set the topic was, uh, oh, shit, it's a three-part name. Oh, I'm sorry. He is of Latino descent. What? Um, here, I can pull it up. You want to vamp for two seconds? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm excited to do this. I wasn't, when Matt mentioned that this might be on the tier, I was like, wow, this would be great. It depends on how much people donate, how much they'd be interested in it, uh, uh, having us do it. And Because I always enjoyed doing these because it was always surprising to us who won and who didn't. Who like we we thought a certain film would win and that film got destroyed like it happened so many times and so it was something that we'd never predict and this time too I really was really surprised at the numbers as they came in of who won uh, between Prisoners and Primal Fear I really thought Primal Fear would give it a run for its money and it did not. Whoops. Do you hey, have the name? I thought I was about to pull. Oh, it you're up almost there. There's okay. one typo in all of that. But uh, Matt, were, Matt and I were monitoring it for like a few days right after we, he put it up, and prisoners just ran away with this thing. It was intense. Yeah, and for the people that said, "Hey, could you give us a little bit more heads up next time?" We will going forward. This oh, sure. Is the, this is the first one, and we wanted to get it up so we can. Uh, we're going to try and do. We're going to do two of these a month. Yeah. So it just it fit in the sequence better if we can just get this up immediately so people could start uh, actively participating. Yeah. Um. All right, here we go. Here we go. Should I vamp some more? <laughs> yeah, give me, give me. It's all about the loading at this point. All right. And the stupid thing. So uh, yeah, I'm on Patreon. I'm pulling it up right no, now. No, but I'm I'm excited that we're doing it. And there's a, there's a couple other things. If you have if you're not a Patreon or Patreon a patron of uh, the top ten show yet, and uh, could they listen to this if they're not Patreon? Like this is only four Patreons, right? No, Patrons? this is going up on uh, SK Plus. Okay, so so the gift they got was that they could choose the topic and choose the two movies. Yeah. So Francisco okay. Ramirez Burgos got to choose whether or not it was Thunderdome, Blunderdome, and then what the topic was. I and love he your, chose. I love your attempts at, uh, at Burgos. I lo- yeah, I love your attempts at what would it, What would it be proper? Burgos. Pre- Burgos. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, there's there's no tilde over the R, so I didn't I roll it if as properly as I, I should have. I don't say cu- cucumber. I say cucumber. All right. All right. Anyway. I, I don't know what Cucumber. Cucumber. <laughs> okay. What are you saying? Like, over the top? Like, uh, cucumber? <laughs> Some sort of... I'm saying timber. Yeah. yeah, all right. Anyway, what do you got? Uh, and then Rachel Silvestrini. Silvestrini, right. And then uh, Joey Anthony. Joey Anthony. So Joey Anthony chose Prisoners. Rachel chose... Uh, Primal Fear. Primal Fear. Yeah. I thought it was going to be closer. I really did. We were surprised. Yeah. Like, prisoners ran away with this thing. Destroyed I, it. I think it may be because it's a newer film. Maybe. And Villanueva, everybody, you know, for the most part that's discovered him has gone back and watched other stuff that he's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, just uh, to be fully honest, this was the first time I've ever seen Prisoners. Yeah, I remember I, you saying that. You yeah, hadn't seen it yet. I had not seen it. It was one that everyone had told me it was very, very dark and difficult to get through. 
Uh, and so, and Villeneuve does such a fantastic job of bringing you into the world of whatever he's directing. Oh, it's Villeneuve. Yeah, yeah Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. But um, but I was super excited to take a look at this thing. And dude, I I watched it at eleven o'clock last night, and I stayed up to one thirty, and it was scary as fuck to watch. So it's 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 you a start. It's film. scary. Oh yeah. Really? Oh yeah, very much so. In certain moments, sure, because you're not sure who that. Well, anyway, how are we going to do this? I don't remember. How do we do this thing? We just start talking. We just start talking. I don't think. Yeah. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it and then come back and revisit us here. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I was surprised at how much. um, uh, There really is no let up. There's no moment of levity in the entire fucking movie. The opening three minutes. minutes, Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. yeah, Whatever. See the kids. The trumpet playing is the last moment of levity. Agreed. Yes, that's right. With uh, Terrence Howard. By the way. The acting in the film is really stellar. Of course, Viola, you're always going to get a great performance from, from Viola. Uh, and Terrence Howard, of course, was nominated for an Oscar for Hustle and Flow. But, like, Hugh carrying this film, mm-hmm. I was really surprised at the levels he went to as an actor. Uh, and in that scene where he is crying, like, just broken about, like, just tell me where they are. Just tell me where they are when he's, like, running out of just energy to even torture this kid anymore, desire. It's just, it's heartbreaking. And yeah, he really got there. Yeah, we're know? taking the hammer to that uh, that sink. Yeah. Oh God. And he's just where is Ida? Yeah. Just you can feel the energy translates across, mm-hmm. and you feel it when you're watching it. You're like, yeah. just tell him where's fuck daughter. You're right. <laughs> just just go ahead and do that. And the way the the plot all ties in with the simple the simplicity of just the maze. Yeah. And how eventually, like ah, uh, you know, it's it it is it's a. I like to where it ends. Mm-hmm. Where it's it's unknown as to the final conclusion as to what happens to Hugh Jackman. Right. And I kind of appreciate that because I don't know that his story needs to have a bow on it yeah. to end happy. Yeah. Uh, maybe that maybe they do pull him out, but at the same time he's been in there for long enough that he's practically bled out and he's Yeah, and it's a weird way it ends too, Matt, because Maria Bello kind they have that scene between her her and Jake. And by the way, Jake Gyllenhaal, whoa, so good in the yeah. movie again. And Playing against that, in, like he has that intensity that he always has in every one of his movies, but he doesn't let it out that often in this movie. He, he's not allowed to, right? It's only when he flips out, when he act, when he gets that, when he uh, kind of, motiv- I don't know, when he barges in on the guy to to kind of uh, assault the suspect, and the guy takes the gun and blows his head off. Um, his frustration and destroys the computer, destroys the fucking keyboard. That's the only rare moment of frustration you see him blow up with, right? And usually yeah. it's all over movies with Jake because he has that kind of ability. That that gear is just there, like nobody's business. But seeing him play the restraint through the whole movie, even in that scene when he catches uh, Hugh Jackman like walking across in the rain and he yeah, plays off liquor store, store. liquor store, yeah, uh-huh. like he is trying to not get upset with him. And and Jackman is just giving him the business, man, like so angrily in the car. Well, it's you can understand though because it, initially he's trying to cover his tracks as yeah. to what he's doing, yeah. and then he redirects that to a proper placement of like, why are you following me? Yeah. From his perspective of, shouldn't you be out doing everything you can to find my daughter and her best friend? Yeah, yeah. These two missing girls, as opposed to following the dad of. Right. You don't have something better to do with your time. Right. What I found, because I've seen it one other time and I rewatched it for this. Okay. And what I, I didn't, I guess, maybe internalize the last time, and I can't find if there was any meaning behind it, mm-hmm. but Jillian Hall's character's name is Loki. Yeah, Loki. Just the trickster god. The god of mischief. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, so is it a, a play on that in that he's trying to search through the mischief, search through the, you know, yeah. the charade of what's going on maybe. to decipher maybe the hidden meaning? Yeah. That's the only thing I could come up with. That's right. it. Because I was like, why else call him Loki? I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, it's some meaning that is lost on me, and perhaps somebody out there listening is like, oh, it's obvious yeah. for this, you're an idiot. Be like, well, yeah, I'm not <laughs> denying that. I'm clearly in the dark here, oblivious as to what this possibly could have been. But, I agree with you. It's an unusual choice. Yeah, watching it you know, uh, last night, I was like, oh, God, wait, what is this? Because I knew where the, the story was going, yeah. so my mind would kind of focus on specific aspects as they were going. Like, yeah. oh, I didn't maybe notice that as much. That, and two, is... So the suspect that kills himself... Do we assume that he was molested as a child as well, and uh, he became fixated upon this book? Yes, okay. I, that's, that was my belief, and that he the remember the, the he's looking at the news article Jake Gyllenhaal is, and it's like the the um, correction officer who's killed himself. That's his dad. That's 
Jackman's dad, is it not? Is it Jackman's dad? That's what I thought it was, because oh. that's where he gets the address oh. and knows to go over to, because he puts it together of, you were walking over to there in the car, oh. like whatever Commonwealth or whatever the street was. Okay. And See, he, I thought that was the kid's dad. Okay. And that when you hear the flies and shit when he's going into, uh, when he breaks into the kids, well, it doesn't break in, but when he busts down the door, uh-huh. I thought when you heard the flies buzz and it was going to be his dad like tied to a chair still or whatever and having killed himself. But of course, now logically, it wouldn't make sense because they had put it in the news. They wouldn't have put it in the news if they hadn't, if they had, yeah, had yeah, found right. the body yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that's you, Jackman. All right. So, anyway, but because because he goes to the house right afterwards. So, I thought that's why it was yeah. connected. He goes to that kid's house right afterwards. Well, it's because he got the. Oh, he went call. to Jackman, right. found him, passed out on the floor, and then gets a call from the girl at the dollar right. store or whatever that is right. saying he was just here. Did yeah. you get a plate? And the car just beautifully was driving away right yeah. at that moment. <laughs> Matter of fact, I did. <laughs> that dude is great, though. I yeah. mean, like, he's he's so creepy without trying, and that's mm-hmm. unfortunate. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, what sparks to mind is him in Dark Knight. Because yeah. he's one of the cops. Yes. And you just see the one shot of him, you're like, mm, of course you're friends with the Joker, right. one of his henchmen. You're like, you look perfectly cast as that. He's also an Ant-Man. He plays the Russian guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's him and Ant-Man, too, yeah. Okay. That, that guy is versatile, very versatile. And you're right, he has a very creepy face. Um, so what do you think he's doing when he's being interrogated? He's doing the maze. What it, it seems to me like he was abused as a child. That's, and did he get away? That I, I don't know. Or yeah, yeah, was it because it is the the, the book, the maze in the back of the book? So then yeah. are we saying that the the book is predicated upon the guy that was tied to the chair, or the guy just happened to have the same emblem because he yeah. was so into that world that he was donning kind of the persona of the unknown? Right. Uh, I don't know. The, I don't know. The guy tied to the chair, I think, is Melissa Leo's. It is. It's her husband, husband. right? Yeah. Yeah. That disappeared one day and never came back. Right, because he confessed all. all yeah, kills. to that priest. Yeah, to the priest. Right, exactly. But yeah, but the the so then yeah, you got to because because they, they said the articles of clothing didn't have any human blood and it was all pig's blood. Yeah, and they just well, you saw the pig's head in the sink. Right, exactly. So what's what's that all about? Where did he get all the clothes? Were the snakes? Well, he was sneaking into the houses. Is that what it was? To steal the clothes. That's why he went to the two houses, because later on they find the one sock that okay. Hugh Jackman identifies, and then yeah. they find the second sock Gyllenhaal does out in the dirt. So why was he doing that? Because he has an obsession? He would yeah, he's just one news? of those people that's, that's transfixed by those types of stories and wants to kind of be a part of it, I guess. So he was like cosplaying as a serial killer. Kind character. of. Oh, interesting. Because I know that those, at least according to like movies and TV shows yeah. and whatever else, that there are those people that just become so wrapped up in the world of these types of crimes, yeah. which is understandable because we as an, not to their degree, but we as an audience, I love a good serial killer film or sure. TV show like Mindhunter. Mm-hmm. Or, you I got to get to that. Oh, it's good. Everyone says it. It's good. Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting, too. Yeah. It's like a side of the story that you never really thought about, and you're like, oh, that's that's kind of interesting. Okay, how did this come to be? <laughs> right. Um, and some of the performances in it are top-notch. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, I'm definitely going to uh, jump into it this weekend. Yeah. But yeah, also, I, I really enjoyed, uh, like, Roger Deakins did the cinematography for this. And, you know, for a film like this, you're not going to see sweeping vistas. You know, it's set in kind of a suburban town, so to speak. Yeah, and it looks like the middle of Midwest somewhere. Yeah, sure. Or Vir- it looks like Virginia to me. I, yeah. I know exactly where all that is. I was about to say Pennsylvania is. or yeah. Yeah. it the, all kind of looks the same on some level. Exactly, and the rain really helps. Mm-hmm. All of that kind of gives that vibe of um, of just like this overwhelming sense of just like normalcy, but but uh, impending danger the whole time, like the whole time. Yeah. And so, like when when the guy sneaks into the do into like the, when the first time the kid sneaks into Terrence Howard and Viola Davis's house, I think he's gonna kill the girl in the bathtub. Like I had to pause and take five minutes to calm down. Really? Yeah, because I just did not want to see her getting killed. The film is very engrossing for me, and so when I get engrossed in a film, sometimes I can like really feel like connected to these deaths and like experience this shit and so it can be a very emotional for me so I, like i have to take moments kind of like okay 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 five minutes five minutes five minutes okay turn it back on oh nothing happened all right that's good it's good but i was like initially like fucking freaked out um and the same thing with uh, melissa leo is so you you have no suspicion that it's her at all until he comes back when he comes back and she has her hand in a towel. Yeah. Then I was like, "All right, this is this uh, this 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 bitch did this shit." But I don't. I her motivation is corrupted too because mm-hmm. by her own admission, like her and her husband used to do this to basically as a, a form of of belief in God. Yeah. To bring out the devil and monsters in normal everyday people. Yeah. You're like, oh, wow, that is a fucked up motivation. Mm-hmm. 
to do these terrible, heinous things. Yeah, and how would you respond to it? Yeah. All that kind of jazz. And in no way did I believe that guy was going to kill that girl. I just, from the first time I viewed it, I was like, Paul Dano is still your suspect. Even though everything is pushing me away from it, like the story, oh, it's not him, it's not him. I was like, I I still don't trust him. And they do a great job of it because when he yanks the dog like that, when he chokes the dog like that, it's like, ooh, that's a... That's not a good impulse. No, that's something, something like a serial that. killer would do. Right. So you so when he gets trapped, you're you're caught up in the movie that he could still at some point tell the truth about where the girls are or must know something or whatever. And then when you find out it's such a kick in the pants when you find out that he's like a an abducted kid. Yeah. Oh man. And he had uh, I can't remember what the accident is, but he had an accident, so basically his mind has been reverted to the age of a ten year old. Right. He right. doesn't have the cognitive capacity and you you feel yeah, for an individual like that, and to be thrust into this "quote unquote" family. Yeah, the, the a they stole you, but now you just associate. Oh, this is my family because you don't, you can't. I guess think back that far. How, or I, and that's the question I have for you, Matt. Coming out of this movie, it seems like there's a lot of damage. Although it's a "quote unquote" happy ending in oh, a no. way, there's so much damage all around because Paul Dano's never gonna. I mean, like that's if it's not enough to be a a uh, uh, a victim of child uh kidnapping yeah and then quote-unquote adopted by this melissa leo woman with her husband Mm -hmm. uh as if he wasn't tortured enough probably for years by melissa leo and her husband here comes hugh jackman to torture him some more and even in worse probably worse ways because that viola davis's reaction when she looks at his face and it's all puffed up man that's horrific you know it's overwhelming and then it is hearing his screams when he turns the hot water on you're just like oh my god dude like it's so it really, t- it, and that's what I like about the movie too, is it makes you question. Like, you, yeah, you have your impulses to, if you know you're right, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, go after the person. But in the in the end, if you're going after the wrong person, like, what's the price you have to pay? And it, it's weird how the yeah. film reconciles it because they have Maria Bello have that scene with Jake Gyllenhaal, and she says, "Well, he's a good man. He did what he needed to do to protect our family." And this is an interesting question, Matt. You know? I mean, do women want that when it happens? To, throw away the rule book do what you well, need to do as a man she is to go primal yeah she undercut him saying you promised to protect us yeah you said really you would did. always you know be our knight in shining armor to yeah. some degree and you let her go putting all the blame on him yeah which is you know unfair yeah but at the same time you understand because she's not processing the situation correctly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she's not understanding so she's trying to take the anger the hurt the sadness the sorrow everything that, she, that she's Attempting to her brain to, to, to process what's going on and basically just redirecting it onto him. Yeah. And then his answer to taking, you know, what she has plus his own demons yeah. is to do this to Paul Dano. Yeah. And then pulls in, you know, the other Terrence family. Howard, yeah. Exactly. Well, Terrence, yeah. Terrence Howard is the unwitting passenger mm-hmm. on this journey. Mm-hmm. And, you know, part of me sides with him and part of me sides with Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Like, I understand the motivations of both. I don't know where... In the spectrum, I would fall mm-hmm. because I don't have, I don't have kids. Yeah, but at the same time, if something happened to uh, you know my nephews or nieces, I would be very compelled yeah. to do you know whatever is within my power to do. Yeah, and I can't even fathom then having that amped up to when it's yours. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think that's what's so good about the film is that you get both sides of it because you get. Terrence, who's really upset about it, upset so much that he tells Viola Davis about it. And when he, when Hugh Jackman gives him the power to let Paul Dano go from that sh- con- shower contraption he's put him in, Viola tells him to stop. Yeah. That's a moment, man. You know, because you don't get a lot of time with them, Terrence Howard and Viola. You get more time, obviously, with Hugh Jackman, with Maria Bello a little bit. Yeah, with Jill and Hall, with yeah, everybody all else. That, all that. But, like, you you don't get as much with them. So they're, because that's what I like about the movie. The movie also, like, exposes this underbelly, because they're so happy at the beginning of the movie, you know? Yeah. And it's interesting, a great beginning that, you know, the son is shooting the defenseless deer, which you know, kind of foreshadows what's going to happen to the def- their daughter, the defenseless daughter, you know, could possibly be killed, we think is going to be killed, you know. And um, so all of that is laid, the groundwork is laid, And but you get that this guy is just a regular dude who's like, does these kinds of things, teaching his son to shoot, to hunt. Mm-hmm. Survivalist. Right? Yeah, survivalist, right, right, because he's got all that stuff downstairs in the basement. Yeah. So all, he's a construction guy. So there's a lot of stuff that's involved in him that feels very 
salt of the earth kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. And then him and Maria Bello, they have this really sweet kind of relationship. You see, it seems like a very like lived in relationship. Yeah, you don't see them sh- like shouting at each other or cutting each other off or whatever. And you get a little glimpse of something when the son's like. Well, what about uh, Grandpa's place? And she's like, just like I told your mother, or this fucking da 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 da. So you have that, but you don't really see a lot of fissures. And then when this shit happens, Maria shuts down completely, goes yeah. to her drugs and exactly. sleeps just wants bed to sleep through the whole yeah. you know, ordeal. Yeah. And like Hugh it's Jackman a bad dream. To, yeah, exactly. And Hugh Jackman has to carry the weight, whereas Viola is like present for the whole situation. Uh, Maria is like checking out, and this is the different react. Once again, two different reactions. Yeah, right. You, uh, uh, Viola is the stronger of the morality of the two. Which do you side with more, Viola Davis saying, "We're going to let him do that. We're not going to associate, but yeah. it could yield good results. So let's just distance ourselves." <laughs> or Hugh Jackman taking the onus and being like. This needs to happen. I know this is the correct path. It's not clean. It's not pretty. It's not right. Yeah. But this is what needs to happen. So do you take do you take the side moralistically of the individual question. that's pushing the action or the one that sits by passively and is willing to take the the yielded results, whatever they may be? Yeah, I think it's it all depends on the situation. If it's my daughter, I think I have to slide side, side into the the Hugh Jackman side of it. Me too. Yeah, because. As, uh, there are other things where I, if I'm not as connected to something, then I don't mind someone else being the bad guy and I get the rewards from that because sometimes that that works out in your favor and it's not a negative thing overall. But something like this, you want to be the active participant because you do want to find out what happened. And you want to feel like you did everything possible yeah. to try to find your daughter, you know, because you got to live with yourself whether she lives or dies you got to live with your at with the actions you took to try to find her, which is why I like what they do with Jake, where they have him like it's he's a tortured fucking guy, you know. He's yeah, got, well, he admits to being basically if he wasn't abused as a child by a Catholic priest, yeah, he knows other kids that were right, and that's the start of this character. But he has this kind of uh, very acrimonious relationship with his boss, with his uh, chief yeah. of whatever. Like he, ha- they battle with each other all the time. There's no real like background given of why they. No. Snap at each no other. No need either. Well, yeah, I guess. Not for me. Just like, okay, this is this is also another lived-in relationship where yeah. Gyllenhaal gets results. As they state from the, the beginning, he's never right. lost one of these cases. He's right. always come through. So you give that type of individual that gets results, so long as they're not breaking the law to do it, you give them a longer leash than somebody that you know screws up a lot or can't can't follow through and get the results that you need. Yeah. So you're like, yeah, you know what? This guy gets to sass me back every once and again. That's fine. Because uh, he throws it right back in his face, he too. He does. He does. Like, with the maze afterwards, his boss comes in and be like, did he tell you what uh, what this oh, is before he, God. you know, off himself? Yeah, Jesus. And it's just like, that was basically going, fuck you. Yeah. And you're like, you know what? That was earned. Yeah. That is a fuck you. Yeah. Should never let a m- mentally unhinged guy get your gun. <laughs> and he's just like, well, I guess I don't have to worry about losing you to PSP anymore or whatever it is he says to him about, you know, because obviously you get that idea that he might go on to another job or what is going to, you know, again, that's another thing. Like, he doesn't appreciate the fact this guy always catches his man. It doesn't seem like his boss appreciates it at all. So it just, it's a weird uh, relationship to have. So you put all that pressure on him. So when he blows and then sees what he sees, you know, he really wants to find out the, what happened. And he ends up at, you know, at Melissa Leo's place, and yeah. right, right after Jackman, and that whole scene with her and Jackman is just great. Although there are moments where I thought he could have turned around and like knocked her out and did whatever, but it's it's very reminiscent of the vanishing, which I've talked about on like when we first way back in our first few episodes of the show, uh, which is this uh, I think it's French, Danish or Dutch film, <laughs> where the guy I don't want to get in trouble. The guy who <laughs> one just of go it could have been German. <laughs> Could it definitely wasn't from Great Britain, but one of the Norse countries. I didn't know, uh, but like the uh, the guy kidnaps uh, this dude's wife at a convenience store or at a gas station. Then the guy spends ooh, five years trying to find his wife, or a few years trying to find his wife, and can't get past it. Keeps showing up to the same gas station to show pictures of his wife to people to Mm -hmm. see if they've seen her or whatever. And then the guy watches him for years doing this. Or is it for months, something like that. And then finally he walks up to him and goes, I know where your wife is. I took her. And if you kill me, you're never going to find her. But if you take this pill and or this concoction, you, you will see her again. And what you find out 
and I guess I ruined it for people last time, so I won't ruin it this time. But like, you do find out that he does find his wife, but it's that same thing. It's like this concoction that drugs you, and then like you see the same thing. Melissa Leo saying, if you take this concoction, you'll see your daughter again, right? And yeah. In the end, she really wasn't going to let him see his daughter again because she shot him in the leg, threw him in the fucking pit, or yeah. he threw himself in the pit, and then said, "You'll be done, dead in twenty four hours, not throw her body on top of you," which is so evil, man. Yeah, it is. What, what I don't understand is why didn't Melissa Leo just go ahead and put the syringe in the girl's arm? Once she knows the jig is up, she can get one more in, and she stops. I suppose you're right. So just from that, her the character stands. I mean, obviously, yeah. as an audience, you don't want to see that happen. Right, right, right. But given her character's motivation, you're like, wow, but she, you would think that she would even shoddily try and jab this needle in there and get one more in because she knows, she knows she's done. Well, she said, he said, if you move... Uh, if you make one movement, I'll sh- I'll shoot you. But she was already. She was there. The movement is one inch. You if couldn't she, tell that. If from... she had done that, she would have been shot. So yeah, you're right. I I I, I don't even think that because the the needle was all lined up. Yeah. I, I don't, it could have just been like, hey, I'm just gonna slowly get up, just like talk him and ask, basically bullshit for twenty seconds. Right. Because that's all it would have taken. Just I put it in right. there, quickly plunge in whatever yeah. that was in. I didn't see what was on the the bottom. Neither did I, but it seemed like. Obviously. It's not good. Yeah, right. Not good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never a good thing. It's not water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's, but at the same time, I don't know as an audience, that's asking. That's a bridge too far. Yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Jesus. And the catatonic state that that little girl is in afterwards. Oh, man. And him, and I love the way it was done, the shooting. Like, he got shot. Yeah. She winged his head, and he shot her and put her down, but like, he winged, so... Like, he's driving through the blood and the rain. And that's another thing, too. I'm, like, thinking to myself, fuck, are they going to have him crash the fucking car? And they, like you, Why didn't the cars get out of the way? I don't know. He's a cop, right? He should, they should get He's got way. two different sets of cherries, yeah, one in the point. window and one behind his grill. Yeah. He's like, get the, get the fuck out of the way. Did you hear the siren? I don't remember if they No, but the if you see those lights behind you, yeah, inherently, yeah, yeah. you just you pull over. Yeah. Pull to the right. He was going insane. Get, I thought he was going to pass out. Before he got there or whatever, and they were going to find the daughter and go to, go to another black frame that he did throughout this movie. I thought they were going to another black frame and passed out, um, but he got there, man. And it was so it was it was great to build that tension up that way too. I didn't yeah. know if he's I didn't know if he's going to get there. Like I said, I had never seen it before, so I was like, oh shit. I was also surprised that uh, he didn't uh, grab a bottle, the, yeah. one of the bottles off the ground. Yeah, go ahead and grab it. I okay. can vamp for right. ten seconds, just as you did for me earlier. So that way, when he shows up to the ER, he can be like, "I don't know, but this was what she was trying to put in uh, to the little girl. So maybe, maybe uh, she's got this in her system currently. Maybe she doesn't. And just to give the doctors a better heads up, because if they have an idea as to what she could have been poisoned with, then they can come yep. up with, you know, the antidote for it. The antidote. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's nitpicking at that point. This yeah. is the very end of the movie, and yeah. we kind of need to wrap it up uh, from their perspective. You can't just keep drawing things out, but yeah. What did the movie leave you with after it was over? Like, did you have questions about? Like, did it leave you thinking about things like on your own, or did you just kind of like this is pretty powerful? Uh, I, I'm not going to see this again. Uh, I don't know if it left me with any specific questions, yeah. or it was just it's one of those kind of indelible movies of you, you're going to remember this. Yeah, it has a lasting impact. I mean, not quite the level of like a Requiem for a Dream or something like that. Right. But at the same time, it's still it's in that ballpark. Yeah. Did you walk away with questions? Well, yeah. I mean, I think for me, seeing in retrospect now, having seen Blade Runner, having seen Arrival, having seen Sicario, Sicario and uh, Prisoners are very brother and sister type films in that sure. kind of vibe. But then Arrival, he's in a whole other place. Mm-hmm. And Blade Runner 2040 is a whole, these are like way off the ground, so to speak. Whereas Prisoners and Sicario are very much like gritty films that are planted in the ground and yeah so it seems more true real. to life yeah true to life and it seems more real everything that's happening so for me it feels more powerful and uh stark and unsettling where i was never unsettled by arrival and i was never unsettled by blade runner 2049 i was more enjoying the scope yeah, of the you films. weren't meant to though yeah i guess so so that's what i find interesting about the film like about where he goes next do you know what i'm saying because i sure. like those first two films and then these last two films, I enjoy him as a director, absolutely. Oh yeah, the guy's great. Yeah, he's great. And now, which is whatever the announced next project is, and be like, all right, you already got me. Yeah. Even if other people don't enjoy it, I'm still going to watch it because you've made a couple films that I adore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go. Yeah, even even your missteps, I will appreciate on some level. Yeah. They may not be my favorite movies ever, but you've you've won enough 
uh, with me now that going forward, I am more than willing to see whatever your next artistic venture is going to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Was there anything more we want to say about prisoners? No, that was it. That was yeah. the first Thunderdome. Thunderdome! Uh, yeah, so we'll be doing the next uh, Thunderdome drawing uh, sometime, I would imagine, next week. Okay. Something like that. All right. Uh, just stay tuned. If you want to find that information, go to our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups, forward, uh, forward slash the top 10 show with the number 10. Let's try that again. Facebook.com forward slash groups, forward slash the top 10 show with the number 10. Boom. Uh, and, yeah, and if you want to be a Patreon subscriber, it's www.patreon.com backslash the top 10 uh, with the number 10 I think as well uh, and then follow Matt at Bad Nost mm-hmm. follow me at the Roca Says uh, and uh, we will talk to you next time yeah. on Thunderdome Thunderdome <laughs>